Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel, The Inside Post. This weekend, <clears throat> starting Friday, October 6th, we have the Caneland Fall Meet kicking off with several Win in Your In Breeders' Cup stakes races um, for the big Breeders' Cup race in November at Santa Anita Race Park. So we're going to handicap this late pick five for you, give you our best bets, uh, next up contender and one long shot play to use in your pick five sequence if you're that type of wager. If not, use our top picks as your win wager, and then you can use the others for exactas and trifectas. So we're going to kick off this tough early Keen or late pick five sequence at Keeneland um, with a maiden, the Nyquist uh, Julep Cub by Darley. Um, four maidens in here, and like I said, this is pretty a tough race, like a lot of these are for Keeneland going six furlongs um, on the dirt. Our top pick is going to go with number two, <clears throat> um, Bourbon Breeze, um, kind of like the name of this one out of Omaha Beach with a little bit of Malibu Moon on the uh, top of that as well. Um, was a $200,000 purchase in the Keeneland September yearling sale. Um, posted a pretty good workout, I believe, on the Churchill Downs uh, training course. Um, this one's trained by Riley Ma. Going to get Irad aboard on there. Um, looks to be uh, posting some pretty good workouts. Um, I kind of like that 9 to 2 price. Usually you don't get that on a lot of first-time Irad horses. Um, <clears throat> Sons of Omaha Beach. Um, or sorry, da Daughters of Omaha Beach um, seem, seem to be off to a pretty good start, so we'll see what this one is capable of in here. Um, second pick, um, this one probably could have been flipped for our top pick, and Tammy Lynn out of Distorted Humor um, with Orb. Um, this one was bred in Kentucky by Centaur Farms. $17,000 purchase, so a little bit on the cheaper side. <clears throat> this one is actually owned by Spinthrift here. Gets Lu Luis Saez for Al Stahl. Does have a race under her belt, a $136,000 uh, maiden uh, at Saratoga. This was on the turf, comes in here uh, on the dirt and going a little bit longer. So interesting to see that switch up. Um, so going to use this horse. Also, as our second pick. And one long shot, <clears throat> or the long shot pick, I guess, that this one we're probably going to have to go four or five deep. Um, th four deep for sure. Easy Street for Mark Cassie gets Tyler Gaffleone. Um, this one's a Munnings Philly. Um, bred in Kentucky as well. This one is owned by DJ Stable Leonard Green. Um Workouts are comparable to to our other top two picks in here. This one was a big purchase price as well with $125,000. Um, really not much to go off of. Uh, Cassie, first-timers, do fairly well. Obviously, gets Tyler Gaffling on a board. Um, so that's obviously another checkbox there. Another one to use in any of your wagering would be number 12, Berlane. Uh, this is Brad Cox trained. Um, this one is out of a congrats sire line. So I'm, you don't hear a lot of the congrats um, sires or crops uh, kind of being successful right out of the gate. So interesting to see um, what we get here. This one is owned by Klein Racing and Richard Klein. Flivion Pratt aboard again. So another uh, trainer jockey combo that kind of checks that box if you're that type of angle better. All right, race seven, we're going to jump right into the grade two Stoll Keenan Ogden Phoenix. Um, this is a win in your end Breeders' Cup race for the sprint division. And another really, really good race. Um, this is for three year olds and up. We are going six furlongs on the dirt. Um, another race. That looks possibly like you're going to have to go too deep for sure. Um, there's really not much of a single in here. Um, maybe you have to go four, four deep in this race. Bango is the topic. Um, looking at this horse's last seven, eight runs. I mean, it's either first or second in a lot of them. Um, however, not ran in any grade six racing. Um, comes out of some pretty hefty uh stakes races um 
the most of them being at Churchill, a few of them coming from fairgrounds. Um, nothing huge did run against Goodnight. Um, ran second to Goodnight, beat out Tejana Twist. Um, I think that was about three races back. Um, has ran with this company of horses that it's running against now several times. Um, most notable last time out, uh, beating out Gulfstream Way and Necker Island. Um, has beat out Maniwa, has beat out Sibelius. So, seems to be a horse that's coming in uh, with the ability to hit the board. Um, if you look at all those last races, has some pretty high speed figures, 109, 107, and 108 in those last three starts. Um, I believe the angle Greg Foley and Tyler Tyler G is hitting at a ridiculous rate right now, especially since Churchill had their little like week-long or two-week-long <coughs> uh, race card there in September. Next, we're going to use the eight, the Ward trained horse with Ira aboard as well. Um, this one has ran into grade one, grade two, uh, Gallant Bob, the grade one Malibu, and then a couple grade threes leading up to an allowance $80,000 condition. Um, has ran probably against some of the more challenging competition. Um, if you look last time out, ran against Sheriff Bianco and Baby Yoda. Um, was beat out by Prevalence and Straight No Chaser um, at Pimlico. Comes to Keeneland um, in April. Um, was beat out by Hear Me Song and Hoist the Gold. Um, so definitely a horse that's ran against pretty good horses, especially in the Malibu. Um, was beat out by Tabin for Bed and Kingdom. Finished third there as well. So if you look back at these past performances on Nakatomi, the horse is finishing first, second, third, and fourth. Um okay. So another one that should be considered as a top pick in here, um, just based off of the past runnings and those speed figures. Um, if you look, Tyler Gaffleone was on this horse, but he's his preference obviously is going to be with Bengo. Um, that's kind of why we went with that one as our top pick and kind of left Nakatomi to the side. Um, for our third pick, kind of went between Hoist the Gold and Gulfstream Way. Um, Gulfstream Way coming out of that uh, $300,000 stakes race at Churchill Downs, finishing second to Bango. Uh, it's kind of why we put um, this one ahead of Hoist the Gold. Um, 813 lifetime, or in 2023. Um, that 108 speed figure kind of stuck out to us, and a horse that seems to be I, don't, I would say improving, but has been definitely running consistent consistently um, since it was claimed uh, by the, the new owners in this Cuba racing or Rick Cuber. Um, did run in the Knicks go before it was claimed out. Um, so we'll see if it's kind of getting its footing. Um, definitely one to, I feel like you almost have to use it in the pick five sequence just because it's, it's Norm Cassie. It's Ricardo Santana. The horse is getting better. The horse is staying consistent. It's just, is this step up in glass going to be too much for Gulfstream White? It ran second by a head or got beat by a head last time out to Bengo. So I think, it, I think it has the ability if it's definitely one that's going to be improving. Um, so it's, it's definitely one to take in consideration. Uh, next, we put long shot. This probably is more of our fourth, not really a long shot at eight to one for horse, the gold Dallas Stewart, Johnny V. Uh, another one ran in the Pat O'Brien grade two out at Del Mar. So this horse is coming back here. Um, so the horse has been shipped here uh, for what was it? The Churchill downs uh, sprint with Cody's wish and then ships out to Del Mar for a couple races that being Crosby and the Pat O'Brien. So definitely the one that's coming out of probably the bigger, the higher class of races. <coughs> um, just because it's ran against Cody's Wish two times, um, the Hear Me Song, um, and and the, the Chosen Run, in that being Crosby. So the biggest thing there was the Bing Crosby, the horse finished eighth, and then the Pat O'Brien finishing sixth. So the horse is kind of going the wrong direction, but this is a little bit easier field um from the likes of cody's wish 
Um, so interesting to see again, the horse, like I said, the horse kind of ships back here. Um, so don't know if that will could have an effect on this horse puts has put in some pretty good workouts on the Churchill downs track. So the horse has been over here. It looks like since maybe August. So should be okay. In that case, long shot pick. If you want to add another one to your picks would be Sibelius. Um, number three at 12 to one. Um, we will probably throw this one in with a pretty good workout if you have that deeper pocket for your pick five. Race eight, the 33 time running this, the Jessamine. Um, this is a grade two for the win and you're in for the juvenile Phillies. This will be on the turf of another probably hard sequence of not necessarily first timers, but horses that have raced, I think it's like three or four times. So definitely a challenging uh, race on the card. Our top pick, we're going with number one, Smooth Ways, Mike Maker and Tyler Gaffleone. Um, Brogan's Maiden last time out in $150,000 uh, Maiden special weight at Kentucky Downs. Um, so hopefully that turf form from Kentucky Downs transfers here to the Keeneland turf um, for Smooth Ways. Um, daughter out of English Channel and Kittens Joy. So kind of love that uh, pedigree there that has been built for the turf. Um, 93 speed figure kind of did it from the pace or pushing the pace a little bit in that race. Um, so we should be able to look for smooth ways to have that ability as well from the inside stall. Second pick, we're going to try with time to dazzle. <clears throat> this is a gray filly out of not this time from unbridled song. Um, won an $82,000 maiden. Um, this was at Woodbine. So a little bit lower class, um, for Mark Cassie, this one gets Luis Saez aboard. Another one that's probably going to sit mid-pack and make a, a, a run a little bit later. Um, so an interesting one there. Um, speed figure 86, just off of smooth waves, just a hair. Third, Bachu, um, $120,000 maiden at Churchill. This one won going a mile and a 16th, so definitely um, gets a little bit um familiarity with going that distance again Kentucky Downs whoops just getting Churchill um so should be able to transfer that turf um racing into here um looks like the one that possibly is going to come from off the pace a little bit um or it could be the preferred running cell coming off the pace um look to be sitting mid pack last time out um again another one that could make a pretty uh, good run late. I would say if you were going one, two horses deep in here, Buchu will probably be singled a lot on cards. And so will the smooth waves or even time to dazzle. Um, time to dazzle probably won't get as much respect just coming from Woodbine um, and kind of going a shorter distance with stretching out again um, for its second start. So betters will probably tend away from there. Um, so if you wanted to go one, two with Buchu and smooth, smooth waves, that's probably what a lot of the betting public will roll with. Um, long shot, um, and Pharaoh's wine, uh, winner, $150,000 again, uh, Kentucky downs out of American Pharaoh. Um, a little bit slower speed figure, which it's on the turf. It really doesn't account for much. Um, but this horse is getting a lot of talk and being um, interesting and it put in an interesting spot to come in here. Um, did break its maiden, I guess, last time out. So yeah. um, not real sure. Speed figures are kind of off of our other our other three horses that we have selected. Um, but has an early possible po early possibility of getting out to the lead and setting the pace or being able to press the pace. Um, so that's always interesting in these long uh, turf sprints or turf routes <clears throat> to see what the pace is going to be or who's going to dictate the pace. And I think a lot of these horses want to sit close to the lead um, just because they're, they're running for the third or fourth time and, and they're, they're still two year olds. So interesting Pharaoh's wine. Definitely should be set up close to the lead in this race. Next, we have the Darley Alcibada. 
um, grade one for, again, juvenile fillies in here for the win in your end Breeders' Cup race. Here you see <clears throat> the likes of Vivi's Dream coming out of the Pocahontas, um, and we have Brightwork, the winner of the grade one spinaway. Um, Brightwork looks to be the class, the top horse in here. Um, Vivi's Dream does have her beat out on some speed figures, but Brightwork coming out of that big grade one. Uh, spin away looked really good. Um, it's four for four, so has not been beaten in her four starts. Um, gets Irad again aboard for John Ortiz. Um, looks to be working out really well again, again on the on the Keeneland track. Um, so the horse is getting some familiarity with that ground. Um, broke its maiden at Keeneland as well, um, going a little bit shorter, going for four and a half. So sticking with. Bright work as our topic. Vivi's dream. This one was close. Um, we'll probably go one, two in here with these two um, to cheapen up our ticket. Um, Vivi's dream again. That Pocahontas looked really good. Um, posted a 91 speed figure. So a horse that's getting better um, comes in three and two. So it got beat out in the debutante um, by bright work, um, but was the favorite, the betting favorite in there. So we'll see if. Vivi's Dream and Brian Hernandez is going to get a better jump on bright work um, coming into this race. I think it's a good two-horse race um, between these two. Um, so we're just probably sticking with these two in our uh, pick five sequence. Emery or Emery, um, more than ready filly here with Street Sense for Brad Cox, Tyler Gaffleone. Interesting coming in, breaking her maiden um, on a muddy track. At Saratoga comes in with pretty good workouts um, on the Churchill Downs track. Um, 81 speed figure last time out. So this horse will probably be running for third um, if the other two horses kind of go at each other. Um, possibly looking to come from the back, mid-pack um, area. Since this one only has one start, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, that's kind of what the horse did the last time out was come from the middle. Um, so could be an interesting one here. Um, if you're playing any type of exacta with Vivi's dream and bright work, you got to use Emery as an underneath and our long shot pick. We're going big because the two top runners in here, um, we're going to go with Alice beach or Ali's beach out of Omaha beach, um, for Tom Amos and Flavion Pratt, um, broker maiden, um, at Saratoga going six and a half did have Tyler Gaffley on a board and then goes straight to the spin away. Yeah, definitely a tough order. Um, had Dylan Davis aboard there and <sighs> kind of was moved out, um, was pushed out, I guess in the turn and obviously faltered there was beat out by bright work ways and means. Um, so definitely was a tough task. I think it comes in here and it's not going to find a lot of, <laughs> Other tough horses like that. Um, obviously, it's running with Bright Work and Vivi's Dream, but I think this is a good horse to use um, for any type of your trifectas um, or a superfecta, um, just because the horse has some late speed. Um, and I think if it has a better setup here, Flavion Pratt's going to set this horse up really pretty good, especially from the one post, um, to make that late run ability, especially if those top two contingents kind of go off and battle each other out. Um, the other one that kind of caught our eye was Wine on Tap for Todd Pletcher and Don Velasquez. Um, another one that could either, it looks like the horse wants to go to the lead. Um, comes out of two stakes races um, as the betting favorite. Been the betting favorite in all three of her races. Finished second last time out. Um, <clears throat> so definitely one to kind of watch what the wagering does on this at 20 to 1. Um, possibly another one to use in a trifecta or superfecta. <laughs> and to cap it, race 10. This is just the Mystic Guide, a simple allowance race, 120,000 going one mile on the turf. Another betting race um, that could be quite challenging. Um, our top pick will be the Golden Alchemist <clears throat> with Chad Brown and Irad Ortiz. Uh, possibly looking to single this horse in this race um, to kind of help our ticket. I know it's the turf and it's kind of challenging to single on the turf, but I think this horse comes in 
with speed, um, with some tacticalness in the, in the pace and that settings coming from that off the paced um, running style. Um, out of Nyquist, so definitely the speed is there with lemon drop for the grass. Um, so interesting on the pedigree side of this horse. It is 2-0 so far in 2023, um, but I think the horse is kind of trending up right now and should be set up to run fairly well. Um, second, that's not second. Second should be Bose in here um, for Brendan Walsh and Tyler Gaffleone. Like I said, this will probably be the other horse that we – tie in if we go too deep in the uh pick five sequence we'll go with a 10 golden alchemist and the five bows um, just kind of comparable on some of their speeds comparable on their running styles they're both going to be coming from the back of the field um, bows coming out of that allowance non-winners of two winning that posting a 98 speed figure um so posted a Okay workout um, at the Turf, Turfway Park, I believe, is where that's at. Um, so definitely one to consider if you're going too deep. And our long shot pick, kind of going two horses in a long shot, um, is the Grand Motion Trained Script with Johnny Velasquez. I know the horse finished eighth last time out. Um, kind of just looking for a price. I think... <clears throat> um, Uh, there's just bad setups in those last two races. Um, I think they change up some tactics here and try to get this horse more forwardly placed. Um, Johnny, Johnny's been on this horse three times now. Um, so should definitely look to get a better placing instead of trying to get the horse buried so deep. And then obviously the horse doesn't want to have any late kick as it's been able to do nothing from coming from the back. So I think they need to set a little closer um, for script and see if they can either get out early and stay ahead or um, try to set up a little bit closer of the mid pack scenarios. But only using two horses in here, we're going to go bows and golden alchemist for our uh, pick five sequence in the final leg of this pick five, difficult pick five um, at Keeneland for their opening Friday card. So there's our picks for the late pick five on Keeneland opening day for October 6th. We hope that you enjoy the video and play our picks. Um, let us know down below your best bet for opening card um, at Keeneland. Make sure to give us a like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.